Hello, welcome back again for another simple tutorial in DaVinci Resolve and today we're going to do the Deaconizer effect. This effect is named after a famous cinematographer. His name is Roger Deakins and so he one day tried to have a distinct vintage look from tilt shift effect. So he modified this video and this is the result of this effect. It's called the Deaconizer effect. I called it a wolf vision effect because it kind of resembles of how the world is perceived through a werewolf's point of this view. This is of course based on the movies we've seen. I'm 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 not I'm not a not a werewolf. I'm not <laughs> So without keep you waiting, let's get started. First, I want to thank you for stopping by and if you like that intro we have at the beginning, I appreciate if you consider liking this video after watching it entirely and might as well subscribe and turn the bell on. So let's get started. So on our main edit tab, we have our clip as is, um, no color grade whatsoever. This was shot using my, my iPhone and then the next thing we're going to do is to swap to the color tab where we are going to do most of the effect uh, there. It's up to you to figure out where the color tab is. <coughs> Kidding, <laughs> color tab is right down here. And as always, once inside the color tab, I would instantly add a second node because it's already a habit of mine. I always leave the first node as is sometime, but I tweak the contrast and saturation and maybe white balance too. But as you can see, I'm just making a simple S curve here. Now that it looks good, I'm going to jump as always, we like, we like to jump around <laughs> to our second node. So select the second node, jump back down to our window selection tool, uh, which is the third icon here and select the circle. And we're going to draw oval shape on top of our clip. We are going to adjust our main blue circle a bit bigger. Adjust the softness down here as well so to avoid any abrupt sharpness to our edges. I would say to let's, let's put it into 20. We could also drag the outer red circle here to adjust manually. Um, and yes, that looks fine to me. Next, I'm gonna drag and drop the zoom blur effect from our open effects window. We see the default is actually taking effect on this center, but we don't want that. Instead, we invert it by clicking this icon alongside the circle. And for the border type, I, I suggest to leave it to black. Well, the reason is uh, we're actually going to add um, we're going to add the vignette effect later on so it doesn't matter if it's black or black or reflect but you can use other type as well and then we can mess around with the blur strength and blend i would leave it at default for now now this is going to be interesting from here we are now going to add a splitter combiner node so how to add this one is under the color tab hover on the node select the add splitter combiner node and then you see it's kind of messy I'll just going to close adjust some windows and arrange this one to see how it's supposed to look. So this is how a splitter combiner node looks like. Split into three nodes from top to bottom, the red, the green and the blue. So just to quickly explain what this node does is it splits the three channels, the red, the green, and the blue channels uh, from the previous node. And after we, we, we modify each of those channels, it combines it all again to pass on to the next node, if there is. Okay, so select the red channel. And what I'm gonna do is to go down to our blur selection. And this is the fifth icon down here and, and under radius. I'm just going to bump it up just like that. So to give our red channel a little blur. Uh, by the way, this radius, you can also use it if you want to sharpen your, your image or your clip. And for our green channel, I'm going to apply the prism blur. 
So while our green channel is selected, go down to our open effects, so, um, search for the prism blur, drag it on top of our clip. I don't know why they separate the prism blur from other blur effects. Um, and for that setting again, feel free to play around the different properties here. So just follow along if you would like to use this, but I recommend to set each and every clip a different one. And for the last uh, channel, the blue one, I would like to add another blur, that is the Gaussian blur. And for this, I'd like to leave everything default. Okay, now we're a few more steps and we're done with our effects, so just hang in there. Add another node. We are going to apply a LUT. So LUT, if it's a lookup table, and there's a tons of tutorials there in YouTube if you wanna learn about uh, to open the LUT. Um, just click on the LUT uh, tab right next to the gallery and double click the LUT that you want to apply. Uh, LUT. But this is a LUT that I have created with a lot of um, combination and named it to Wolf Vision LUT. Uh, feel free to download the LUT in the description below. This is optional, but we are going to add a vignette. Again, under open effects, search for vignette and drag it into our clip. The only thing I want to touch is the blend mode. Basically, just play with the blend node. And now, for our final touch, we're going to add the flicker effect. We can definitely put it on to the same node here. So on drag it on to our clip and by default it gives a slower flicker speed so what what i'm gonna do is to just bump up the speed to 2.5 or so yeah we'll just try to have a preview of our clip give it some time to render and so there you have it guys i think this is a good effect you can definitely use this effect not only as a wolf vision effect it could be a, a hallucinating character or it could be a flashback effect. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Feel free to drop a comment below. Bye and be safe.